Good morning, everyone. Welcome to this morning's study. Uh, we're going to continue studying Tova and Jay here, and then move on from there, hopefully. So before we begin, can you join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we are thankful for these studies these mor this morning, uh, for each person that joins us, and uh, those that watch these videos online. We ask that you can bless them. And we ask, Lord, that as we open your word together, your Holy Spirit can direct our minds and uh, correct us in our understanding and bring light for our feet. We ask as well, Lord, that you can give us strength to follow and serve you each day. We know, Lord, there are many needs around us. Help us to meet those needs and that you can uh, give us a conviction of what is right and um, the power uh, to observe the things that you ask us to do. We pray for the camp meeting coming up and uh, the mess messages that are being prepared for people planning to come. We ask that your angels can guide and, and uh, intervene where Satan would seek uh, to bring hindrances. Help us, Lord, to trust in you have confidence in your leading. Be with us now, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay. Well, good morning again. So um, we have these five verses, Tola and Jair. Um, and we had discussed a little bit just about the placement of these lines, because we know when we look at each of these judges, they occur chronologically one after the other, but when we're placing them on a line, because we're zooming into a way mark on a line, um, that they don't necessarily follow one another completely. Uh, that is, we understand Tola and Jair are addressing a darkness that precedes July 18th. That is the way mark that they have in the line of the judges July 18, 2020, and that this is a darkness regarding uh, two th basic things. That is, what's going to happen after July 18. That is, we did, that July 18 for us is a disappointment. And, um, and yet, there's, it's hidden to us to some degree that we're going to have this disappointment. Now, we do have light prior to July 18 that we possibly could have a disappointment. Uh, but the other thing is this conflict between the time setting of Parminder, and not just Parminder, but any false ideas of time setting, and, and what the real use of time is in this movement. So what we have here in these five verses are all kinds of symbols. Um, one of the things that we have been using as symbols is the numbers of the names, the Hebrew numbers that are given here in, in Strong's uh, for the names of these judges. And so Tola and Jair, what we did is we added them together. So that's 8439 plus uh, 2971. And, and you can see that there, 2971 for Jair. And uh, Tola is 8439, and you add them together, you get 11,410. And if we use that number as a span of time, we can go to December 26, 1991, and it brings us to March 23rd, 2023. Well, March 23rd, uh, 2023 is the first day of the first month of 2023. So it brings us seven years, said in seven biblical years, uh, to April 5th, 2030. So we have the 777 from November 9th to December 26th, and then we count 11,410 days, and it brings us to March 23rd, 2023, which is exactly seven biblical years to the first day of the first month in 2030. It also reminds us of Daniel 11, verse 41, which is the Sunday law. So we, we note these symbols here. Now, I was looking at some of the other judges, and 
And I said, well, Tola and Jair, you can add them together. And so I did that um, with uh, Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. So I'm just going to go back to that slide here. We'll deal with those judges. So up here in, so I'm just going to share the screen. So here we have up in the corner, Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar. I'm just going to zoom in maybe. That make it easier. It's really zoom in. Okay. And so I added together. Oops. So I added together the numbers of their names. So 6274 and 261 for Ehud and, and Shamgar's. 8044, and it comes up to 14,579. And if we go from November 9th, 1989, that is, we're going to go from the end of November 9th in this case, and we count that number of days, it'll bring us to the start of Tishri 1 in 2029. So again, that's the, the start of a year. This time it's the civil year, and that's going to be the civil year in which the first day of the first month is April 5th, 2030. So it's, it's rather interesting how we can, um, you know, connect these different starts of the year, the first day, of the first month and so forth. So whatever that means, it's, it's just that it's highly unlikely that we're going to have these two examples, Ehud, e, uh, Othniel, Ehud and Shamgar, connecting us in some way with the start of a Jewish year. Um, now, we know this one's going from November 9th, 1989. The other one, of course, from the end of that 777 days. So this is at the start. And when we can see the logic of it, because Othniel, Ehud, and Shamgar are addressing the start of our line, which is September 11th, uh, 2001. But September 11th is connected to November 9th. So we can see... Um, they start there on September 11th, um, but we know that that's connected to November 9th, 1989, the time of the end. So, so it just seems to me that this is not something that is um, just a coincidence. So with uh, this line here, Tola and Jair, um, we, had, we had dealt with these symbols, so we talked about that. Um, there's the December 26, 1991 date, going all the way to March 23rd, 2023, and March 23rd, 2023. You can see it's the first day of the first month. And, and of course, that date in the Gregorian calendar is 3.23.23, so it has that 3.23.23. It's a, it's a mirror rather interesting. And we know that uh, um, the symbol here uh, that's connected with Tola is the 23 years. So we have that there. And with J years, the 22 years. Um, yeah, so Tola was of Issachar, a tribe noted with understanding of the times to guide Israel. Angela's note there in the chat. Um, and then we looked at, since this is the darkness and we look at these events, we're going to see that July 18, October 30th, that's when they have uh, that conference. It's going to be on the 13th day of the eighth month on the biblical calendar, um, where they have this uh, meeting and they set up this uh, committee, I guess it would be to examine why we were disappointed with July 18th. They have a predetermined conclusion that they're pushing and uh, they're gonna empower that on December 6, 2020 when they uh, use Parminder's arguments against July 18th, basically. Um, and uh, of course we can see the writing on the wall there, 112, uh, 126 shekels symbolized by December 6th. 
And that, of course, we know July 18th also gives us the 126. Seven times 18 is 126. So, um, let's see. Anything else there? I mean, obviously we can get both from both of them, the 2520 as well, just by multiplying it by the year 20, 2020. So, um, and then, so we say that that first message in, we can see that these are, these way marks are actually negative ideas. That is, these are not the messages. It's the rejection of these messages that is marking these messages. So if you understand what I'm saying. So if we accept December 6, 2020 declaration, we actually have a false message. So this is a message that's counteracting the true. And so it's, it's the response to this negative message that is what's empowering this message of July 18th. And, and all through this, remember, I've written the paper after July 18, 2020. That paper is really a focal point of this whole discussion uh, in this time. So it's going to be rejected. Basically, we can say uh, the message is rejected on October 30th, and that's empowered on December 6, 2020. And that message is why we were disappointed, the real reason we were disappointed on July 18th. So when we get to March 27th, 2021, we're saying the second angel arrives. And that is, this is 252 days after July 18th. And the movement is not interested in March 27th, 2021. That is, the movement isn't working together to understand what the significance of this way mark is. We know it's the 13th day of the 13th month on the biblical calendar. It's Passover on the, the rabbinic calendar. It's the symbol of 273, and it's 273 days before December 25th, 2021. I didn't put that in there because we know that. Um, and uh, we're saying that... Uh, this message, so even though we said this is Tola and Jair, uh, we haven't really written that in here. We just say this is the line of Tola and Jair. But what we're saying is Tola begins July 18th and goes to March 27th, and Jair begins March 27th and goes to uh, September 3rd. Now, when we look at these 252s, of course, and the 525, we see them, normally we look at them from November 9th, 2019 to December 25th, 2021, right? Uh, okay, so, and Angela has a point there, which we will discuss. So, um, so we can see that we have these, this other 777 days, right? And we're connecting it to this 45 years because of a symbol. And, and the question is, why did we do that? And we're saying that this 45 years is a symbol uh, from Millerite history. Um, so we're not saying that that is 45 years, but it symbolizes from the time of the end to you know, the end of the, the 1335 and the 1290, not the 1290, 1335. And, and, and that's going to be in 1843. So we're marking that it goes all the way then to September 3rd, 2022. So now the September 3rd, 2022 date, Angela has um, wondered whether that date uh, since it's the sixth day of the sixth month, could parallel Cestius's withdrawal from Jerusalem. Um, also, three times 22, as in 2022, equals 666. Okay. Um, 
Well, I think the Cestius idea is interesting, though I just, I take that the primary symbol there is 6-6, six, six, which of course is a shorthand for 666. Six, six. That is, 6 times 6 is 36. And we know that 36 is a shorthand for 666, right? Because if you have 36 squares and you add up the numbers 1 to 36 in a magic square, right? You get 666. Or you just add up 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. You get uh, 666 once you've added it all together. So, so it's a symbol for the Sunday law. And the Sunday law we usually have is the third angel arriving. Now, this is internal within this movement. Now, what's going to happen on September 3rd is that Colin does a presentation where he's going to note the 777 days after July 18th. But what Colin doesn't have is an explanation for the significance of that 777 days. And here we do. That is, here we can take this line of Tola and Jair, and we can see it's a line. We can have a significance of what's happening within this movement. So this second message, the message of Jair, which starts on March 27th and goes to September 3rd, 2022, um, uh, this message then is going to be uh, connected with, we say a message arrives. So the message that arrives there has to do with an understanding of these lines. And we're then going to have Colin's presentation. That's going to be um, 273 days after March 27th, 2021. On the 20th day in the ninth month on the biblical calendar. And then 49 days later, we know that Odilio presents his study that goes along with Colin's study. They're dealing with two different aspects of our predictions. July 18 is primarily the focus of Odilio's study, and Trump is the focus of Colin's study. And then we have Colin's final study, or not, but the study before. Um, November 8th, 2022, where he's going to have this uh, midterm election where he makes predictions there regarding that midterm election, which don't pan out. Now, we studied Tola and Jair and drew out this line on March 15th, 2023. So we noted that it was 718 days after March 27th, 2021. Um, so I think that is significant. And that we could see then the 777 days at that time and its implication in these lines. Now, we've added more details. Um, on, unlike other ones, we're not writing like each verse uh, is this way mark, but we can see that the symbols exist there. So it's, it's not really, we don't have to say that this way mark has this verse, and this way mark is this verse because all of these symbols are just coming together to create this line. And then we also have the 777 days from March 27th, 2021. So we, we have these chains of 777 days that show up in our lines. Now this brings us to May 13th, 2023. Now May 13th, 2023 ends up being um, a parallel in some ways to March 5th, March 23, 2023, because March 23 is seven years, biblical years before April 5th, 2030. Um, but we also see that May 13th is 2525, 20 days prior to April 5th, 2030. So that you can take March 27th, 2021, count 777 days, and then count 2520 days and bringing us to April 5th, 2030 uh, should be considered significant, right? That is, these way marks that we have 
in our lines, the major way marks, November 9th, 1989, December 26th, 1991, November 9th, uh, 2019, July 18th, 2020, March 27th, 2021. These all, in some ways, connect us in this chain of structure to April 5th, 2030, in lots of different ways. So this April 5th, 2030 date originally came from the week of Christ study. It's been witnessed to in more than a half a dozen ways, probably a dozen ways, with the connections of our lines. So, uh, so here, I think, we, we just have to say that this is just more evidence for this future date that we don't know what it means. Even if it's just a symbolic date, it's giving us uh, symbols that relate to our time. Any questions about this line? Because as far as I'm concerned, it's, it's complete enough for us to present uh, at the camp meeting. We'll probably notice other things as we go through these lines at the camp meeting. But is there any questions, any clarifications? Can you do the shorthand of 666 six, six again? I didn't get that. If you multiply six times six, you get 36. Mm -hmm. And if you go one plus two plus three plus four plus five, all the way up to plus 36, it adds up to 666. Okay. So, yeah. And and we know that the connection there in Babylonian mysticism has to do with the idea that they divide the sky into 36 parts, right? So um, 36 constellations. So that, uh, and of course, they have 360 degrees, which is six times six times 10. Or six times 60. <clears throat> so it's all part of this ideas of Babylon, which is related to the mark of the beast and modern Babylon. Okay. And um, just this little chart down at the bottom, these are just these dates. Um, you can see July 18th, October 30th, December 6th. So I've just written out and noting the spans of time between these dates. Um, so little more analysis uh, can occur when we do this. You can save up to 10 dates on the calendar converter um, and to create these little charts. And it's interesting from uh, December 6, 2020, when we have that declaration, if we go to May 13th, 2023, we have the number 888 days. And, and that's simply because December 6, 2020 is 111 days prior to March 27th, 2021. And what's the symbol of 111? You mean, what does it symbolize? Yeah. Yeah. What is the symbol? What does the symbol mean? Yeah. So 77, 777 days is 111 weeks, right? So obviously 111 times seven is 777. It also shows up in our line as January 11th. And it becomes a date that Jeff marks as part of the Levitical chiasm. Yeah, Samuel notes that there, January 11th. And it's also, Colin brings us to January 11th, 2023. So we don't have that on that line, that's this line, but that's going to show up in the line of Samson. So as far as I'm concerned, we're done here with this line. Um, the next is the line of Jephthah. And so we're going to go to the scriptures here, dealing with Jephthah. Um, but before we get to Jephthah itself, we just need to look at the darkness. Well, I mean, it's related to, to this. So what happens after Jair dies? Um, we're going to have uh, 
just as we have in the book of Judges, you have some oppression that occurs, and then you have a judge that comes and delivers them. Now, some of the judges aren't put like Tola and Jair, they're just judges that are ruling, in a sense, during that time, protecting God's people. Um, they don't have a particular enemy, per se, that's being mentioned. Uh, but then what we're going to see here in Judges 10, 6, uh, the children of Israel did again, did evil again in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam and Ashtoreth. So this is this, this twofold enemy, I guess you might say. Um, so this is this, um, now they're the gods of Syria and the gods of Zidon, the gods of Moab, the gods of the children of Ammon, the gods of the Philistines. So we, we could look at this in a number of ways. Um, obviously a Balaam, Ashtoreth, gods of Syria, Zidon, Moab, Ammon, Philistines, right? So, uh, so there's different ways that you could count this out. And because, of course, some of these nations are serving Balaam and Ashtoreth. Can't remember exactly what we did with that as far as we had some number or count and how we understood that. But this is what's what's happening. Now, um, so the, the oppressor that's going to come is going to be the Philistines. Right? The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel, and he sold them into the hands of the Philistines and into the hands of the children of Ammon, so the Ammonites. And that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel. 18 years. So from the year that this occurs, um, and so when it says that year, I'm assuming that it's it's the year that Jair, Jair dies. So, but I'm not certain, you know, exactly why when he dies, are they suddenly worshiping Balaam and Ashtoreth? Or is there a period of time that's here before they are oppressed? And we're going to have this 18 years that's going to be mentioned. I would think that there's a period of time. Uh, that before this 18 years. Yes. Okay. Now, if Stephen was here, he could probably tell us what he thinks about it. And he's going to do so during the, the camp meeting, uh, trying to sort through this chronology. But it's, it's not clear. But we know that it says, and that year. Now, um, uh, now this word here is just an emphatic uh, sort of term. And it, it's so sometimes it can be with the article that same year. So it can be a demonstrative and so forth. Now, if we look at this in Hebrew, no, you don't read Hebrew, but. Um, so um, take a look at the comment in the chat. Um, the comment in the chat 18 years contrasting with the Passover call to reform in Josiah's 18th year. Um Well, possibly. Um, okay, so here's the frost in here. Where was I? Here it is. This was verse eight. Okay, so in verse eight, um, so Israel, let me see what is that. Okay, so it's got this this here. So these are very similar words. So it's going to break in pieces. Uh, to crack in pieces.
So there's two different Hebrew words. They're very similar. They broke in pieces and crushed them. And, and they obviously come from a... Say both of them are primitive roots, but they're very similar. Ra'atz and the other one is pronounced the same. They just spelt differently. So this is this would be sort of a pun, a play on words that's being used to emphasize something. And then it we have uh, the children of Israel, and then we have in the year, Hashana, and then we have this word here, ho or he, who or he. Um, so it just means uh, self, the same they, and um, 18 years. Shana. So, so this doesn't really make sense with what I have here. So it's this word here. Himself resuming. So I'm trying to figure out if it what this is. Uh, with the article. So Sorry about that. I'm just trying to figure out. This is not a word I've seen very often. So with the article, it's a demonstrative. Demonstrative pronoun, which is that. So in that year, right? Um, exactly is a demonstrative. Demonstrative? Yeah. Just like that this, those, these, it's a pronoun and, and it's, I don't know why they call it demonstrative. Um, so so spe specifically it's correct in the translation when it says in that year. So the question is what year is it specifically referring to? Um, so in that year, they vexed and oppressed the children of Israel 18 years. All the children that were on the other side, Jordan in the land of the Amorites, which is in Gilead. Moreover, the children of Ammon passed over the Jordan to fight also against Judah and against Benjamin and against the house of Ephraim, so that Israel was sore distressed. And the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, saying, We have sinned against thee, both because we have forsaken our God, and also served Balaam. And the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Did not I deliver you from the Egyptians, and from the Amorites, and from the children of Ammon, and from the Philistines, the Zidonians also, and the Amalekites, and the Maonites did oppress you? And ye cried to me, and I delivered you out of their hand. Yet ye have forsaken me, and, and served other gods. Therefore I will deliver you no more. Go and cry unto the gods which ye have chosen. Let them deliver you in the time of your tribulation. And the children of Israel said unto the Lord, We have sinned. Do thou unto us whatsoever seemeth good unto thee. Deliver us only, we pray thee, this day. And they put away the strange gods from among them and served the Lord, and his soul was grieved for the misery of Israel. Then the children of Ammon were gathered together and encamped in Gilead, and the children of Israel assembled themselves together and encamped in Mizpah. And the people and princes of Gilead said one to another, What man is he that will begin to fight against the children of Ammon? He shall be head over all the inhabitants of Gilead. Right? So this is setting up the story, of course, for Jephthah. So they're being oppressed for 18 years. And then... Jephthah comes to deliver them. Now, of course, there's a message given because they're being oppressed by the Philistines and the Ammonites. And they are then going to change. They're going to reform because of this message. So 
so the problem with Jephthah in now we know that Jephthah is going to be in Judges 11 1 right so we've taken this 11 1 and seen it as January 11th so in this line if we go back to our diagrams Um, and we look at, I'm just going here just because I got a judge's line here. So when we look at a judge's line, we can see that Jephthah is going to be a waymark that is zoomed into December 6, 2020. So this is about the declaration, right? That That's the basic idea. We've taken this December 6, 2020 waymark in the judge's line. We zoom into it. And we get the line of Jephthah. But the line of Jephthah, Jephthah, the story of Jephthah, is going to start at Judges 11, verse 1. And we're saying that that symbol is the symbol that we have there with Samson, right? So we see it January 11th, 2023. That's connected with Samson. But it's going to be in the line of Jephthah that we have that symbol. So when we look at this line of Jephthah, um, uh, it's going to uh, a deal with the January 11th symbol. But notice the January 11th symbol that it's going to address is not the one in 2023, but the January 11th symbol in 2020. And that's going to be this... Um, Waymark that uh, the Jeff marks as the end of the Levitical chiasm. So, so, so we're going to have to keep that in mind as we we look at this line. So every time we're looking at a line, we need to know what we're zoomed into. Now, Judges eleven eleven is going to be significant, as you will see, but we're we're going to go through that. I'm going to go through this whole line. And in some ways, we've we've completed this line. That is, we have much more information about this line as we go through, because when we were going through, we started to go in more detail and add things like the verses. So when we drew out this line, we drew it out much more uh, completely than we had drawn out the earlier ones. But there are still things that we need to add to this line and note. So then we have a period of darkness. So if this is December uh, 6th, 2020, if that's what we're zooming into in the story of Jephthah, um, it doesn't mean that we start this line on December 6th, 2020, right? In fact, we're going to see that we have December 6th, 2020 as the arrival of the third message. So this line is going to look previous to December 6, 2020, for its beginning. And so it's going to be addressing uh, uh, information, messages, that are then going to be, um, uh, have to be received in order to receive the message of December 6, 2020. Now, we know that's when the declaration is, but it's not the declaration that is the arrival of the message. It's the response to the declaration that is an arrival of a message. So there's so there's something here about this line of Jephthah that we've uh, tried to understand. Now, in this line of Jephthah, when we had done this, Ron had... Um, uh, given us this diagram, it's, it's a little bit, uh, the lines are pretty curvy and there's lots of information that we're gonna look at. But what he did is, which I would have done differently, but I would have used the chart, it's easier to look at, but he just took the dates that we have on the line of Jephthah 
and he noted the spans of time between these dates. And so these become significant. This is something that we, we started doing then when we analyzed the other lines. When we went back, we would look at the spans of time more closely. But Jephthah has lots of spans of time that are significant. And, and so we're going to have to look at that when we go to Jephthah. So we'll, we'll try to clean up this diagram so it's just a little easier for people to follow um, and look at the symbols that are there so that they, they're clearly marked. So that's going to have to be done. Uh, with this line as well. And um, uh, we have uh, this, this span of time here. So there's uh, six years, so we're going to have to look at that. We have these different number of days, 20, 30 days, um, from June 22nd, 2014 to January 11th, 2020. Um, this 57,766 57, days, which is 30, 31 times 186. So we have a lot of these spans of time, and as we're going to see as we look at more of them, that have all of these symbols come together in this line of Jephthah. Now we know since what is the main thing that is rejected by FFA on December 6, 2020? What is, what is their main attack? against July 18. They were concerned about dates in the future. Yeah, and the symbolic use of dates, right? Correct, Stephen? Well, I, I would say they would have some understanding of the symbolic use of dates. Um, well, when I read the declaration, uh, that's what I see is uh, they reject the idea that we could use dates, specifically uh, things like uh, the day of the fourth month, the first day of the fifth month. So let me see if I can. So um, take a look again at the message in the chat. I'll be interested in your uh, comment. Yeah, yeah, Daniel 1145. Yeah, that would make sense. Okay, so that's just the, could 4,511 4, days be connected to Daniel 1145? Yes. Um, So they're going to talk about um, these symbols. Uh, changing the period time, such as 187 days or 2604 days into a date symbol, such as 18th day of the seventh month or the 26th day of the fourth month. So they reject that idea. Um, obviously, any chrono chronological structure used as templates to place on future dates as or date symbols. So they don't want future dates or date symbols. Um, right. So they it, they say uh, misapplication of symbols. William Miller's rule number twelve and thirteen give us constraints for the meaning and application of symbols. Those rules require the characteristics of the events which gave the symbol its meaning and the event at the way mark you wish to apply it to must correspond. Now, so the big problem they have here for they say, for example, four date symbols were applied to July 18th, uh, the 10th day of the fifth month, 26th day of the fourth month, the 18th day of the seventh month, and July 18, 1844, none of which were affirmed on July 18, 2020. So what they're saying is since None of, none of the events that were expected happened. We have to reject the use of those dates as symbols, right? And, and to me, this is the primary problem with what they are saying. Well, 
Yeah. If we compare, if we're comparing that with what occurred on October 22nd, 1844, does that same logic, attempted logic, apply? Yes, they would have to say the same thing about October 22, 1844, that William Miller misapplied symbols, right? Because basically they're saying, since what he predicted didn't occur, he must have been wrong in his use of those symbols. And, and particularly, that would be the day for a year principle. But we have a great difficulty here in what they're saying about symbolic use of dates, because we know that we have the first day of the fifth month and the fifth day of the fourth month and the first day of the fifth month and the 10th day of the seventh month as symbols. And if you're going to argue that you can't use these other dates as symbols, which come from Millerite history, that is, you can't use the dates in Samuel Snow's letters or the structures of those, you can't use the dates in 457 BC. Now, they didn't put that in there, but uh, Larry Hine was quite clear, that, and, and Larry Lesher, both of them, that our use of those chiasms in 457 BC with the symbolic spans of time, you know, the 107 days representing the 10th day of the seventh month or the 54 days representing the fifth day of the fourth month or the dates in the center of those chiasms, October 22 and um, the sixth day of the third month, Pentecost, those were meaningless, right? So even though those were things that especially Larry Lesher thought were remarkable, he's going to reject that, that that was significant at all, right? So if you're going to start down this road of saying, well, we weren't following Miller's rules for the simple reason nothing happened on the date expected, so we couldn't have used those dates as symbols, I mean, Personally, I just think this is the same. I mean, it's it's just a repudiation of everything that this movement has stood for. Um, so saying that we can't take spans of time and somehow use them as symbols, I mean, Jephthah is going to witness against this over and over again, right? So this waymark, the sixth, the, the the sixth of December in twenty twenty, which is is characterized by Jephthah, is going to be uh, um, is yeah. So we can compare what happened after October 22, 1844, just a rejection of their message. So that happened in this movement. But you can see Jephthah is going to be the strongest witness against this. And so one of the things that um, Jephthah does is that the third angel arrives on, the, on December 6, 2020. But it's going to go back to these other dates, which like June 22, 2014, that Jeff is going to recognize, as well as January eleventh, twenty 2020, that Jeff recognizes. Um, and you, you can see, obviously, the connection here with these, uh, and we're going to see more of them, but with what the, sim the basic symbol for FFA that Jeff had recognized was this June 22nd date, right? June 22nd, 2011, he gets $165,000. And they have the first camp meeting in Arkansas uh, after they had established the School of the Prophets on June 22nd, 2014. Now, it's going to be at the Lambert Church, but it's still, he has the School of the Prophets set up. He has his students. They're going to be there. Um, and they're going to also have a camp meeting in October, right? So I just put October 22. That's the midst of the week in 2014. Um, and that's going to be... Uh, that in June 22nd, you're going to have Joel, he's going to, or not Joel, Noel, he's going to present uh, the, basically we get the symbol now 
the first day of the fifth month, right? That symbol becomes uh, something that they, so they start on June 22nd to now take a date like the first day of the fifth, fifth month, which is going to be August 15th in 1844. And they see that as a symbol, right? So, um, so these are Im important waymarks connected to December 6, 2020. So if you get the first day of the fifth month on June 22nd, 2014, in this movement, it's now understood that this is a symbol. We're going to start looking at the symbolic use of dates from that date on. Now, October 22, that's going to be the camp meeting that, that I'm at where I present chronology, right? So we're going to see how these relate to these verse, verses. And then January 11th, 2020, the significance there um, is going to be, uh, Jeff is going to recognize that date as part of this Levitical chiasm. And he's going to use this, we're going to have this, um, now he doesn't do that on that date, but he recognizes that date later. Um, I believe it's actually on March 31st, 2020, that he does that presentation. So that's going to be the second angel arriving. So the second angel arriving is going to be related to that January 11th date. Um, and then on June 22nd, 2020, um, again, we just have the June 22nd date. So there's going to be more to that that we have to look at. We look at Judges 11, verse 12 to 27. And then we have the July 18 date, and then finally the December 6 date. So that's how we set up the line. We, we put these different verses there. Um, and then we have a fourth angel arriving, which we put as April 5th, 2030. So whatever that means, just in this line, the line of Jephthah. And it could be just April 5th, 2030 is this symbolic date that, um, sorry about the ding there. Um, April 5th, 2030 is the symbolic date that uh, uh, relates to um, this line, this symbolic, what, what the use of symbolic dates. So April 5th, 2030 is this symbolic date, whether it's a literal date or anything we don't know, but it, it's all part of the structure. It comes from the week of Christ, it's connected to Millerite history by 2300 lunar months, the first day of the first month in 1844 to April 5th, 2030. It's also 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months. And it's also uh, an ordinal count of 187 years. It's the 187th year from uh, the first day of the first month in 1844. So 186 cardinal count. So, so that to me is, is pretty remarkable. We have all of these things that are in this line and we need to examine them. So, so that's what we're doing is we're seeing that December 6, 2020 is a rejection of this message. Now they're trying to focus of course upon time setting, but their main attack is what they call the misapplication of symbols. Um, and it, even when they quote Ellen White, our position has been of wa waiting and watching with no time proclamation to intervene between the close of the prophetic periods in 1844 and the time of our Lord's coming. We have to take Ellen White's statements seriously. And that has been my position the entire time, that we cannot predict these events that Ellen White is talking about, that time as we see it here in these lines, is simply internal for this movement, right? That we don't have time here to predict some event. We can't say, well, when's the Sunday law going to be? Can we figure that out? Because Ellen White has forbidden us to predict those events. And I understand the temptation that people have to want to predict events. But we can't do it. And that's what our lines have shown us. These, this time in our movement is a witness against time setting. 
which seems almost ironic, but it's it's natural that God would do that. He's going to give us, because we're repeating Millerite history, we obviously have time attached to our movement, but not for the purpose of predicting when events in the future are going to happen. But we still need to measure the time, right? Now, I just want to go back to that measuring the time. Because um, where do we get it from? Because I refer to it all the time. And I can never remember the reference. It's in the book of Second Esdras. Um, and so there's a few different verses. So let me see if I can find them. Um, by measure he hath measured the times, and by number he hath numbered the times, and he doth not move nor stir them until the said measure be fulfilled. Now, um, now we, we don't take this book as, as the scripture. We know that there is lots of problems in these apocryphal books. One is we don't have them in their original language. Um, but Ellen White says that we need to note that there are things in these books that we need to, because they're hidden books, but, but there are things that we can see in here that are important. I can't remember her exact words. Um, so, but it says God has measured the times. And I think it's going to be in the next chapter. Always forget. I should have this memorized. Um, okay, and then it so that was as a second Ezra's four verse thirty seven, and then and then it's Ezra nine. He answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself. And when thou seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world, which he made. Therefore, when there shall be seen earthquakes and uproars of the people in the world, then shalt thou well understand that the most high spake of those things from the days that were before thee, even from the beginning. So that's 2nd Ezra 9, verse 1, uh, and up to verse 4, okay? So God has measured the times, and we are to measure the time diligently in itself. Cannot, can, can you see that that's what we're doing as we look at these events? We're placing them upon a line. And we're looking at these spans of time and we're measuring them, right? And this is not time setting. When thou seest the signs of the seest part of the signs past, which I have told thee before, then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time, right? This is, this is showing us that we are nearing the end of time. But it's not giving us a specific date for when Jesus is going to come back or when probation is going to close or when the Sunday law is going to come or when the outpouring of the latter rain is going to come or any promise of special significance. We're not given the time when those things are going to occur. And so we have within this movement people who still want to set dates. So Angela says here, our lines show time spans already set and we're merely discovering them. Yes. So for the most part, almost everything we're measuring is in the past or right immediately in the present. But again, we're not, we're not predicting events. Now we have these dates in the future, seven years in the future. 
And, and so somebody could look at this and say, well, you're time setting. But we're just saying that that date, April 5th, 2030, is witnessed to by the week of Christ study. It shows a connection with Millerite history. And even if it only exists symbolically, it does that. That is, it cannot, it doesn't have to be referring to any event that is ever going to happen. It doesn't tell us that, you know, Jesus is going to come back after this date. We don't know, right? It doesn't set a limit. All it does is tell us that symbolically we're in this, in this time. And that date witnesses to the events that we are presently passing through and have passed through. Right? So that we have 2300 lunar months, 187, that it's the hundred start of the 187th year. And that it's 187 prophetic years and 20 prophetic months from the first disappointment. That is a powerful witness, but it also witnesses to our lines. It gives us September 11th, 2021. It witnesses to that being 354 months, right? Which ties us to Ezra chapter 7 to 10, right? So Ezra 7 to 10, that whole line, that whole story, uh, the 354 days from the first day of the first month. To the first day of the first month. The 9-11 is the first day of the first month as a symbol. Right? So you just can't, you can't dismiss this based upon the idea, well, nothing happened in July 18th. And see, this is the thing. The people who rejected July 18th after July 18th had supported July 18th, but did they do so with a proper understanding of July 18th. Did people fully understand what July 18th was about, why we arrived at that date? That's maybe a little bit unfair because there wasn't many people who fully understood this. But did they have the opportunity to understand it? Could those at FFA have studied the presentations dealing with the failed prediction line? Could they have presented that to the movement? Would that have helped the movement if prior to July 18th that the movement had studied the real reason for July 18th, why that date was given? It would have helped, right? I believe, some, I believe some would have been helped, but I don't think the outcome would have been much different. No, I don't think the outcome outcome would have been different. But I, I, well, you know, you can't really say, I mean, ifs, you know, what if this happened? Because I really think that if the movement from the beginning had been open to study these things, it would have changed the character of the movement. That is, uh, the movement has had a resistance to light, and I'm not saying Jeff, but I'm saying people in the movement have been in the movement for the wrong reason. And that's clearly understood. Same thing happened in Millerite history. People can attach themselves to the truth because it is convincing, but be unconverted by the truth. that their motivations are wrong. And we could see that in the opposition to the messages that existed within the movement, the resistance uh, to what was being presented. And for them, it was a personal issue. It had nothing to do 
in their minds with the truth, it had to do with the person presenting the truth that they had problems with. Right? But of course, one of the things we do when we don't want to accept a message, we attack the messenger. We find fault with them. So the motivations are wrong. And so when they reject the message of July 18th, they try to distance, distance themselves uh, from the disappointment. Uh, in reality, they are condemning themselves. Right? Because they're saying what we did was wrong. And yet they're not, they're not addressing why what they did would have been wrong. Exactly. Right? That is, there's no true repentance. It's like, we made a mistake. We're going to blame someone else. Right? We were deceived. Uh, who does that remind you of? Adam and Eve, the devil, it's, it's all blaming someone else. There's no true repentance in that December 6, 2020 declaration. It's an attack. It's attack against other people who they, they try to say deceive them. Yeah. So the mistake was listening to someone else. So cutting them off solves the problem, but it doesn't solve the problem of what's inside of us, right? Because what July 18th was meant to do is to show us our sin, right? The fact that we were unprepared for these events and, and trying to say, well, we were misled, especially when there's so much evidence of scripture um, and, and see, they try to say, well, it's just these symbolic dates. That's why we came up with July 18th. But it's much more than that. Right? This isn't just about it, because they don't understand why we arrived at this date in the first place. As Jeff said, everything this movement has been about led us to that date. So they're going to pick this symbolic use of dates, but ignore how how we got to that point in the first place. Right. How did we get to that July 18th, 2020 prediction? They, it's not understood. To them, it's almost like it just popped out of nowhere on November 9th or something like that, that the movement decided they're going to predict this other date based upon some studies that Theodore did, right? That's not the case. This, this tied everything together that Jeff had been teaching. So to sort of single out this symbolic use of dates in, in a specific manner is just undermining the entire message. Now, this line of Jephthah is going to be the strongest witness against what it is they're rejecting. So, you know, we're... we're we're going to go through it. We've got 15 minutes left today, but we're going to try to get through this. This week, I would like to, to finish with Jephthah and just sort of look ahead because I have sort of a plan of what we need to do. It doesn't always work out that way, um, but we know we have, um, you know, we have Jephthah, then we have Ibzan, Elon, and Abdon, and then Samson. And now these are quite involved, right? So maybe even if we could get through Jephthah faster, but I don't think we will. I think we'll be done at the end of this week. And then um, it's hard to believe, but basically we got um, uh, four more weeks until the camp meeting after that. And we might take some time off from the morning studies prior to the camp meeting because there's going to be lots of work that needs to be done, especially when Stephen gets here. Um, as far as getting the notes together, getting these printed, and uh, also the physical preparation for the camp meeting. So, um, 
So, you know, here we're just at Jephthah and we should be able to get this finished. So just giving you an idea of why we're going to be moving a little bit quicker than we had. Now, um, with the line of Jephthah, we have this, it starts at Judges 11.1, 1, but we mark Judges 1 verse 4 as the time of the end. And it came to pass in process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel. So we're going to use Judges 11 verse 4 as the time of the end. Now, to that, there's this preamble, of course, one to three. So we could have put 11 verse one to four. So chapter 11, verse one to four. So the thing about Jephthah, he's a Gileadite. He's a mighty man of valor, but he was the son of a harlot. Right. So this is the message of Jephthah. This is the message that is going to be rejected by FFA. Um, so he's the son of Gilead. Gilead's wife bare him sons, and his wife's sons grew up, and they thrust out Jephthah. So this message is going to be thrust out. So we're saying that this is the message of Jephthah is the message of July 18, 2020, just in a simple, broad fashion. Right, so he's going to be thrust out. And here, I've got to, for some reason, I didn't do this right. Um, and said unto him, thou shalt not inherit in our father's house, for thou art the son of a strange woman. Right? Now, we discussed this before. What did this mean? Because a strange woman would usually refer to a foreign woman. Right? But it doesn't always have to. Right? And, and I think we looked at some Spirit of Prophecy quotes dealing with this. Um, so I think the conclusion was is she was also not an Israelite. If I remember correctly. But she's also a harlot. And Jephthah fled from his brethren and dwelt in the land of Tov, which is goodness. And there were gathered vain men to Jephthah and went out with him. So these are basically useless people, worthless. So Jephthah's fled. He doesn't have the greatest companions, right? Um, but when this happens in the process of time that the children of Ammon made war against Israel, they're going to want Jephthah, right? And it, and it was so that when the children of Ammon made war against Israel, the elders of Gilead went to fetch Jephthah out of the land of Tov, right? So the question is, why do they need Jephthah? I mean, obviously there they need Jephthah, but I'm talking about in our movement, why do we need Jephthah? Why is he fetched? What is being fetched? What is this message? Because if we're going to put it on our line as 2014, um, specifically June 22nd, what's happening in the movement? What happened in the movement in 2014? The school of the prophets was set up after they got that, they applied that great gift. Okay. More broadly speaking, we had a division that occurred in the movement, right? Because remember, Ezra 7 9, it's introduced by um, Emiliano. Right, back in 2013. But in 2014, it's going to come out that all of these ministries that had been supporting FFA, that they're basically going to leave the movement. They're, they're, they're basically kicking Jeff out of his own movement, right? 
It's a rebellion that occurs. So that, that's what's happening. So the message of Jephthah is, which had been thrust out. So we're saying that this message was thrust out. Uh, but they're going to call it back in. Now, now technically speaking, in 2014, uh, the movement for the first time is going to hear my presentations, the you know, in Arkansas in 2014. Uh, but in 2013 and, and even earlier, I mean, I, I came into the movement in 2010. Um, but in, in 2013, I'm going to do that same calculation that Noel does. But I'm still nobody in the movement, right? Nobody knows who I am. Um, I mean, Jeff knew me from 2010 when he met me. When he came in 2013, he knew who I was. And I, you know, written him and asked him questions and stuff. So he knew about that. And, and so when I did the presentation dealing with uh, calendars and stuff, um, dealing with the 2520 prophetic mirror and the seven times, which was the same thing he was presenting the four seven times in 2013, you know, he asked this question regarding Ezra 7, 9, because they were trying to figure this out, right? So, <clears throat> so we're saying that this message of Jephthah is an illegitimate message in some way. That's, that's whatever this message is. It's something that's been thrust out. Now, I would think that to a large degree, what had been thrust out in the movement has been uh, anything having to do with dates or chronology that in any way sort of hints at time setting, right? Now, we could even say, you know, back in 2012, when Parminder made his time prediction for 2014, um, in some ways, uh, the response to Parminder was um, inappropriate. That is, I'm not saying Jeff was wrong to just dismiss uh, time setting. But the thing is, the movement wasn't ready to look at time in any way in 2012. Right? We're basically just like all Seventh-day Adventists. We don't want to have anything to do with time dates uh, but that's going to change when this division happens within this movement for the first time we're going to start looking at time in a new way right so when noel presents the first day of the fifth month we now have opened up this door to something that most adventists wouldn't want to be looking at and that's why in, in the summer of 2014, when I presented in Alberta, I presented my chrono chronological analysis of the prophecies in the Old Testament. You know, Jeff asked me a question, are you using any of this to predict future events? Now, he said it in a less direct way than that, right? It's more like, well, is any of this uh, kind of, you know, showing you things about uh, dates in the future, anything like that, because he was cautious, just like we all would be about time setting. And I assured him, you know, definitely not, you know, I don't believe in time setting. Um, but you can see how this, this would represent something that is going to be uh, called upon in the movement in 2014. And as we move through this history, um, it's going to be relied on, right? And, and people are not happy with this. I mean, in 2014, when I present in October, uh, the 20th and the 21st, I present those three studies, just dealing with chronology. 
uh, people walking up at a meeting saying this is a waste of our time. People don't want to know, generally in Adventism, anything to do with time. And that's because of the misuse of time to a large degree, right? But for some reason, this message of time is going to be invited back into this movement at a time where there is this conflict. Okay, so that's the way that I would characterize this. Any thoughts on on Jephthah, that, well, how I'm symbolizing what Jephthah is? Not yet. Okay. So um, now as far as, you know, and I haven't done much with the, the numbers of Jephthah's name, but we've been doing this. Um, you know, so if I take his number of his name, it's 3316. 33, yeah, 3316. And often what I do is I just look at how long it is, if it's a number of days. Um, so three three one six three sixty five point two five is what I normally do, and it's going to be uh, it's going to be about nine years, and uh, a month, nine years and one month. I don't know if that means anything. Um, but, you know, it's something that we will look at to the number of his his name, right? Jephthah, so 3316. So it's nine years and one month. I don't, I don't know what it means. I'm just saying that that's how long it would be. Now, um, now we have the six years here. Uh, so why do we get the six years? Why did I put six years on the chart? Where did we get that from in the story of Jephthah? I don't remember why, so that's why I'm asking. Okay, nine years and one month, uh, 19 years from 742 to 723. I don't think so. I don't think I would do that with, uh, with that period of time. So I think we're just marking the six years here. Just simply that's how long we have in this line. So from... 2014 to 2020, but I thought we had it attached to something. There's a reason why we noted this six years. So, well, Jephthah, he, uh, mm -hmm. he's going to judge for six years. Oh, he is? Okay. So where is that? Judges what? I think maybe 12 or 11, near the end of 11, maybe. See here. Oh, yeah, it's going to be chapter 12, 12 verse 7. Ah, okay. Now, that's pretty significant as well. Right? Now, we have Judges 12 verse 7. We, we mark it as April 5th, 2030. Uh, I'm not sure why we put it there. Now, um, the reverse book verse, that is if we take um, from the book of Judges and you take Judges 12 or 7, it's the 252nd 
verse from the end of the book, right? Iran, that's, if I understand that. Um, and the reverse sum of the verse itself is 1629. So I'm just going to say... Um, is 252 now i'm going to do this differently and um the verse sum is 1629 so just putting a note there of that verse So Judges 12 verse 7, of course, we know 12 times 7 is 84. It's on the 18, um, uh, 43 chart. We also know that in it's uh, July 21st. Um, so, so it's 217 as well. Right? So lots of different symbols with that verse. But we're saying that's where we get the six years. <clears throat> Okay, so we'll come back to this tomorrow and start analyzing these verses, going over them, seeing why we place them on these different waymarks. And we should be able to, uh, in three more days, get Jephthah uh, completed, I'm hoping. Right? Okay. So, let's close with prayer. <clears throat> Dear Father in heaven, thank you for this day. And thank you for the things you teach us. And we pray for this movement. We pray for those that have uh, witnessed um, your working and um, who are in discouragement. We ask, Lord, that you can uh, lead us all to repentance. And we pray, Lord, that um, you can help us in these studies to understand your word. Continue to be with us, we pray and ask in Jesus' name. Amen.